But you did mention they want some more balance. And of course, uh, the main culprit or the main guy that would be helping them establish that would be Zeke. He's the running back three in fantasy during those five games with Dak, uh, averaging over 22 fantasy points per game. But then that dropped a whopping 10 points. It's pretty obvious why we saw that offense take a huge hit. Without Dak, he was just the running back 26 over that span. But Dak should be back. There's picks of Zeke also looking pretty ripped up these days. So what do you expect for Zeke coming into this season? Do you think he picks up where he began last year as that running back three? Uh, Or should we be worried about Pollard? What are your thoughts for Zeke in 2021? I wouldn't be worried about Pollard. I do think that Tony will be involved, and I think that the Cowboys want him involved, not necessarily as a traditional running back, but just in the offense generally. Um, I I do in no way buy that Zeke is RB3. Um, you know, I think that – I don't think – and fantasy or not, I don't think Zeke's a top five running back in the NFL right now. I think mm-hmm. he's he's certainly a, a good running back. Um, I think where a lot of Cowboys fans have frustration is, is due to his contract because he's paid like the best running back in the NFL. Right. And so w- when you pay somebody that but you get, you know, RB6, RB7 production, you feel like you're getting ripped off even though you've got one of the better running backs in the NFL. I mean, fantasy or normal football otherwise, I would take Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, uh, Dalvin Cook. I mean, you can I, – Saquon Barkley, if healthy. I mean, you can make a lot of arguments. Obviously, health you know, factors into who you want to draft and where you – you know, how comfortable you are risking things. I And in that weird sense, I think that Zeke is kind of undervalued. I mean, I, I don't think he's RB3, but I think just kind of conventional wisdom. I do think that normal people – you can correct me if I'm wrong – would take all those players above Zeke. I think that – there is this national consensus that Zeke is washed or Zeke is, is past his prime. The cap is overpaid. And I mean, in that sense, he is a little bit undervalued. Yeah. So in that sense, do you, you said you expect Pollard to be involved a little bit, but not like hugely detrimental. That's the main argument I see against Zeke. A lot of people recognize this offense is significantly better with Dak. Let's erase that second half of the season and assume he can uh, pick up where he left off. Do you think Pollard comes in a lot for receiving work? Like, how do you see these two balancing out and mixing in? Because PPR points are obviously so crucial these days. What What are your thoughts on Pollard's role then? So, uh, again, it's, my wife is busy. It's, you know how working from home is. Uh, my dog's name is Bear, so he gets really pissed off and we're not talking about the Bears. Uh, but, um, you know, the Cal- last year after the Cowboys drafted CeeDee Lamb, the conversation was all about 11 personnel. Just, just play out of 11. Don't even get out of it. But things have really changed in the sense that, you know, the Cowboys lost Blake Jarwin in week one last year before the game even ended. I think he only played 21 snaps before he got hurt. Um, So they now know they have two viable tight ends. So they're going to play 12 personnel. And 12 personnel is obviously we've we've got to take Michael Gallup off the field. So already you're making things a little bit more difficult for yourself. I have a hard time imagining the Cowboys playing, you know, some sort of personnel where they get both Zeke Kelly and Tony Pod on the field because they love their wide receivers. And I can't imagine them doing that with regularity to the point that they really you know that, that Pollard would be viable I think Pollard is absolutely worth stashing um Zeke Elliott missed a game due to injury for the first time in his NFL career last year he's got a lot of touches on him over the course of five years I do think though that there is also I think people look at Tony Pollard and they say well you know if he got a chance to run behind that offensive line he would be great and I think that you know I think with the Cowboys specifically I think a lot of non-Cowboys fans, people that root for other teams, lean on these these storylines or these ideas that the, that the Cowboys have had encircling them for a few years. So I think that there are a lot of people who still believe the Cowboys have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. I think they have a really good offensive line. I think it might be a top 10 offensive line, but it is not what your you know average football fan who roots for the you know the New York Giants thinks and, and just sees on national talk shows or whatever it has struggled and it, it really really struggled last year and it will it will bounce back because Tyrant Smith and Lyle Collins are healthy but even with them healthy it is very different to the point that you can't just rely on oh Tony Pollard like Darren McFadden in 2015 picked up a thousand yards behind that offensive line because it was amazing it isn't that situation anymore where Tony Pollard I think does offer some usage in in fantasy, especially in PPR leagues, is out of the backfield. The Cowboys have really never yeah. utilized their running backs that way, but they are focusing a little bit more on it this season. Absolutely, yeah. So intriguing to see. Do, do you think Pollard's involvement will come at the expense of Zeke, or will Zeke still see some receiving work himself? I, I have to imagine that they want to dial Zeke's workload back. I, I don't think they want Zeke to touch the ball 300 times. And I don't know that they want to run the ball that much together, but I do know that they want Tony Pollard more involved. And so mm. 
I mean, if you're going to bet on Tony Pollard at, at any point in Tony's NFL career, this is the year to do it. It is still, though, such an unknown. I mean, in the five years that Zeke Elliott's been on the Cowboys, it has truly absolutely been the Zeke show. In 2018, they only carried two running backs. Like, I mean, just because, mm-hmm. I mean, it is literally has always been about Zeke, and that's been the way they've wanted to operate for so long. But the combination of all the wear and tear on Zeke, the combination of the offensive identity change, and the combination of Dak Prescott assimilating himself into the offense, becoming a better passer, the combination of Kellen Moore getting more involved and obviously being a little bit more of a visionary than, than Jason Garrett, at least, and Scott Linehan, I think lends itself to the idea that Tony Pollard can be uh, a more useful tool. And they realize that. They realize that he is very useful. He offers a skill set that most people on their roster do not. But at the end of the day, a touch for Tony Pollard is one less touch for Michael Gallup or Amari Cooper or CeeDee Lamb or in their eyes, Zeke Elliott or whatever the case may be. But with a a situation where they don't want to run Dak Prescott as much, I could see I could see that opportunity being there. I think he's worth a flyer, but I mean, depending on the range you have to get him, um, you know, what I rather have. I mean, if we're talking RB twos, I'd rather have Kareem Hunt. Um, you know, obviously, um, I, I mean, I'd rather have, um, you know, I, I don't know. I would have if with even before Cam Akers got hurt, I think I would have rather had Daryl Henderson. I mean, than Tony Pollard, just because I I haven't seen the Cowboys lean on that kind of run game before to believe that Tony Pollard is viable in the world of fantasy. Absolutely. Handcuff only, it sounds like for him, maybe a handful of snaps, but not enough to carve out consistent workload. Hopefully not taking away too, too much from Zeke, who's going top seven or so in fantasy drafts right now. What do you think of his stat line from Vegas? Uh, 1,100 and a half yards and nine and a half TDs. You going over or under on those? You know, I, I will take the over, honestly, on, on both, because I think that near the goal line, I think the Cowboys will get shy, especially early on in the season because of Dak. I don't think they, you know, you know how that goes. Any team that's dealing with, with scar tissue from the year before, no no pun intended. I mean, they're going to, I think the Cowboys are going to want to punch it in with Zeke and keep everybody safe and healthy and, and, you know, get their money's worth when it comes to their top running back. And when it comes to yardage, and again, I, that's why I think this season's so interesting. When you're adding in a 17th game, Zeke had the worst year of his NFL career last year from, a, from a, in a, just about every notable metric. He had 979 yards and he missed a game. I mean, so 970 yards in 15 games and he was really bad. Um, And the offense was really bad and the offensive line was really bad. And so 1100 yards is a lot, but that is kind of just par for the course for Zeke. And I I think it will, it will kind of come as a surprise. Like I think we'll be in the middle of, you know, like kind of around Christmas time, be like, man, Zeke's already at like 1,068 yards. You know what I mean? And and it will just kind of be like, it doesn't feel that way. And that sometimes happens with players. A thousand yards, is no longer like a really impressive thing I feel like um so I I, I definitely feel like that I'll take the over on Zeke and and I think that that's a bit of, like I wouldn't have expected that six months ago but that's kind of where we are absolutely and before we move off of Zeke is there any credence to that I mean the pictures he looks great is that translating on the field as well does he look any quicker or faster because he's now all ripped up it's so hard to tell how, yeah. how you know how a run game looks in training camp because True. you know it's it's hard to tell anything but he does look in shape and that's notable. And a lot of people have wondered why. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything, but you could delve into the fact that, you know, for the first time ever in his NFL career, the Cowboys could cut him. I mean, at a, at not the most gargantuan loss next year. Um, also, in this is something you know people have talked about for a few years. But in high school, I think Zeke lost like two games, like his whole high school career. I think he lost two games at Ohio State uh, the entire run, and obviously won a national championship. And so, you know, early on before last year, he'd always been somewhat competitive with the Cowboys. They had missed the playoffs, obviously, but they were always in the mix. Last year was the first time that they were like a joke. I mean, and and I think the first time ever in his life that he's been part of something that has been a joke and he was a really big punchline of it he had six fumbles and so it does seem like for whatever reason he took this offseason much more seriously than he ever had uh, a friend of mine that i do a podcast with uh, on the SB Nation nfl show actually pointed out to me i hadn't realized in off seasons where zeke has been a full participant he's been great in 2016 obviously normal off season as a rookie has his incredible season the next year 2017 there was the Will he be suspended? Won't he be suspended? He's suspended. He's not suspended. He's going to be suspended. It's, you know, they're appealing it, et cetera. And then he missed six games and still almost had a thousand or still had a, a relatively productive season as far as his standards are concerned. In 2018, normal off season, back to normal. Everything leads the league in rushing. 2019 holds out, goes to combo, 
worst year of his NFL career. Last year, obviously, it was a, a very weird year for the entire world. He himself tested positive for COVID. You can debate, um, obviously, how much that may or may not have impacted him personally. Um, and then, obviously, the offense completely falling apart around him and Dak Prescott and everything. And so um, this has been a normal offseason. And so in that context, it's it's worth believing in him, at least from a fantasy lens. But I do think, at least in, in my circles, I think there are a lot of people who doubt him, which is why I think there's a lot of value to be had there. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.